Hello and welcome. My name is Liz Blake. I'm the Director of Business Development for Inera, and I'm here today to talk about preventing citation contamination by flagging references to predatory journals with edifics and cattles. So we actually spoke about this topic uh, in November of 2020 in an SSP webinar, um, along with our colleague uh, Kathleen Berriman from Cabells, uh, to talk about citation contamination and how we uh, had decided to work together to try to address the issue. So this video provides more background on the problem and our joint approach to it, and I do encourage you to uh, check it out if you're interested after today's session. What we mean by citation contamination is um, references in a bibliographic reference list in a scholarly manuscript that cite um, research in a potentially predatory or fraudulent journal. And um, it's an easy uh, problem to miss and um, at various stages in the life cycle uh, of, a, of an article publication, uh, the author may not realize that they're citing a predatory publisher. Um, nor may the reviewers or the editors uh, or the readers if this ends up uh, going to press. So, and then trying to resolve it is also a, a pretty thorny issue. Even if you have access to a reliable database um, of predatory or fraudulent publications, having to look up every single journal title in a given reference list uh, would be a pretty time consuming and onerous task. So we wanted to figure out with um, Cabels if we could potentially automate this process. So the primary challenge here, um, assuming that you have uh, access to a good database, and um, I'm not going to go into uh, great detail at, during this brief session about how Cabels curates their, their database, and, but you should certainly follow up with them if you're interested in learning more. But even if you have access to um, a good database, um, it's still quite challenging to identify um, these journal titles in a bibliographic reference list. Predatory publishers play a lot of games with the names of their journals. They're trying to fool you. So the titles are gonna be similar to the titles of repertory, reputable journals, and oftentimes even flat out hijacked. And then beyond that, if you think about how um, journal titles appear in reference lists, there's lots of different ways uh, they can appear. And uh, both spelled out names and abbreviated names appear in, in reference lists and abbreviated journal titles make this identification even more challenging. So at Anera, we've had um, tools and processes in place for 20 years at this point um, to address this very problem of accurately identifying journal titles in bibliographic reference lists. So we felt that we were well positioned to um, address this problem. So we have um, a couple of software solutions that um, include tools for processing bibliographic references, X-Styles and Edifix being the main ones, and Edifix is the one I'm going to be talking about today. But both of these tools do the same thing with references. Um, we first uh, do what we call parsing of the reference, which is identifying the components, uh, author names, year, title, page numbers, etc. We can then rearrange those components and reformat the references uh, to a preferred editorial style, so automatic copy editing. We can link the references to online databases uh, such as Crossref and PubMed. Um, and then most relevant to our discussion today, we can then validate the content um, in those references uh, based on the data retrieved from those databases. So we can check to make sure that what's on Crossref or PubMed is the same as what the author has included in the manuscript. And when it isn't, we can make corrections when there are discrepancies. Another thing that we can do with uh, data from Crossref and PubMed is flag retractions. So if a reference has been retracted, uh, you're going to get a flag on that and, and can go back to the author and see if you want to keep that reference or revise the paper. So as I said, I'm going to talk today about Edifix, which is our web service for references. So this is just a screenshot of the tool and you can just paste a reference list in. In this case, I've selected AMA style. And at the end of the process, you get back um, corrected, edited, uh, and linked references. And you have a couple of view options. But here I can see all the ways in which Edifix has actually um, made changes to these references. So last fall, uh, at the previous webinar, we discussed some plans for integrating tools 
um, to integrate the Cabell's predatory reports uh, database into Edifix. And this was my little mock-up of what I thought that might look like when we got around to doing it. And I'm happy to report this integration is now live. And uh, we have Cabell's reference checking as part of the Edifix feature set now. So I wanna talk through uh, what exactly that looks like uh, if you are an Edifix user. Uh, so the first thing that will happen is you'll get an alert when you run a job. Um, so uh, a banner will indicate if any of the references in your list uh, cite a journal that appears in Cabell's predatory reports. It will also let you know if you get the all clear and none of your references include journals on that list. You will get an overview of your references, um, which just gives you your stats for any given reference list, including how many of the references were fully processed by Edifix, how many of them linked, um, are any of them retracted, and have any of them been flagged by Cabels, as you can see here. Um, though hopefully four seems like a, a lot, so hopefully you wouldn't see that high a number. And then within the results uh, for the individual references that have been flagged, you're gonna get a comment with additional info. And that additional info will include a link um, to the Cabell's database. And so from the Edifix UI, you can click through and actually open up the web page, the dedicated web page for that publication um, on the Cabell site. And it will tell you what the specific violations are um, associated with that publication and why it has been flagged as predatory. So in order to um, ensure that we're accurately identifying journal titles, we're actually leveraging multiple databases. So we have our own database um, that we've been curating for 20 years of over 50,000 journal titles, both the full title as well as the abbreviated title um, that we're using. We are also using the PubMed and Crossref databases to refine our results, as well as, of course, the Cabell's Predatory Reports database. And this approach, um, as we built out this solution, um, has proven to be far more accurate than a simple lookup of a journal name, and it greatly reduces false positives, which we want to avoid. So this is not a free service, and um, I, I did want to address that. Uh, Beal's list, when it was active, was free, and I'm sure many people wish that there was a, a free way to do this um, kind of lookup. Um, so I do want to talk a little bit about why you might consider paying for this service. Um, this is a quote from my colleague Bruce from just this week. The subtleties of getting this right so that we avoid false positives have been fascinating. Um, it seems like it shouldn't be rocket science to be able to develop a tool to, to flag um, predatory journal titles and references, but to do it well actually does require a lot of thoughtful work. And the fact is this is a pretty complex and in many ways controversial subject. And what we're providing is really only the first step of the process, which is identifying the problem. What you then do with that information is up to you and could also be quite a complex and time consuming process. So really our goal here is to not send you on unproductive wild goose chases and uh, potentially flag something as predatory when it isn't. So our goal is really to be as accurate as possible to give you the best and most reliable information as possible so then you can decide what you're going to do with that information. So we are still working on this. Um, this is, uh, we're, we're now in a beta phase. It is an open beta. So um, for the next six months, the Cabell's reference checking tools will be available to anyone with an Edifix subscription. And if you want it for free free, um, it will be available for one month to anyone with a free Edifix trial. After the beta period, to continue to use the uh, Cabell's reference checking tools, you'll need both a subscription to Edifix and a subscription to Cabell's predatory reports. And certainly anyone who has any questions about that can talk to, to me or uh, to Kathleen from Cabell's. I'm really, encouraging you to please consider signing up to try this out on your references. Um, we are really eager for feedback um, and hoping that as many people as possible uh, give this a go during the next six months. So head on over to edifix.com and click that try it free button if you don't already have a subscription um, so that you can try this out. 
And with that, I think we will break off to the live Q&A portion. Thank you very much for your time. Um, we're happy to address your questions. I will be in the live Q&A. My colleague Bruce Rosenblum will also be there. And I believe Kathleen Berriman from Cabells will be joining. So hopefully any questions that you may have, we'll be able to address. And um, if we don't get to them or run out of time, please do feel free to follow up with any of us um, over the coming months, especially if you are using the tools. Uh, we're very interested in hearing how and when in your workflow you think you might implement this type of tracking and also how you would plan to follow up on the results. Is this something you would push back on the author to resolve? Is this going to be the editor's responsibility or is this going to be something that you just alert the reader to? Um, and I think there are lots of different ways people can approach this. So with that, I will break off. Thank you again for your time and we'll get to the Q&A.